Today we celebrate the rich and storied legacy of this great university. We also honor the vision, the courage, conviction, and determination of our founder, Dr. William Hooper Council, and the countless men and women whose shoulders upon which we stand today. Would you please remain standing for the posting of the colors and the singing of the national anthem. You may be seated. Greetings will now be given by Mr. Albert Benefield, Jr., followed by the responsive reading and invocation led by Reverend O. Wendell Davis. President Higgini, members of the trustee board, Alumni Association President McAnally, and the Alabama Ed and M family. Good morning. Good morning. 140 years ago, an amazing thing happened in the state of Alabama. Equipped with a $1,000 appropriation from the state, 61 students and two teachers, Dr. William Hooper Council founded what is now Alabama Ed and M University. We gather here today as proud sons and daughters to celebrate this great accomplishment. It is up to us to make sure that the legacy of Dr. William Hooper Council continue because he gave his all so that we might shine. So how do we continue that legacy? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. There are three things we can do to ensure that the legacy of Dr. William Hooper Council will continue. <coughs> Number one, make sure that we donate back to the university. If you, if you haven't donate, then donate. If you're currently donating, then continue to donate. Number two, become a member of the Alumni Association. If you're not a member, then join. If you're currently a member, then ask someone else to join because we are the ambassadors for the university. We have to spread the good news and come back the negativity that's out there. And third, we must continue to recruit talented students as we have here this morning so that they can go on to be productive members in the community and repeat that cycle. Now, I wanted to share with you 10 reasons why I'm going to continue doing those three things. Reason number one, because I love Alabama A&M University and I want to see it continue to exist. Reason number two, because I love Alabama A&M University and I want to see it exist. Reason number three, I love Alabama A&M University. Reason number four, I love Alabama A&M University. Reason number five through 10, I love Alabama A&M University. And as we continue to provide service to Alabama A&M, remember that service is sovereignty. Thank you.
Father, we thank you for this day, for it is a day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We pray your bountiful blessings upon this wonderful institution, Alabama A&M University. We pray for the president, official staff, faculty, and the student body. We ask your blessings upon all of the alumni who have come to show their respect and to stand on the rich legacy that's been laid before us. Now, Lord, we pray your blessings upon our country as a whole. Bless our city. In Jesus' name, amen. The poem, The Old Normal Spirit, will now be recited by Ms. Brigine Law of the class of 2017. Following the presentation of that poem, we ask that you stand for our heritage anthem, Lift Every Voice, and sing. Miss Law. The Old Normal Spirit by Elizabeth Gregg. a and how blessed art thou on this memorable hill, whose life has sprung from a dream within, whose vision projects from a spirit untold, whose strength came from a man of old. This man knew no comfort, this man knew no love, yet he toiled unceasingly, untiringly, to inject into thine heart a spirit so that man can come from the boundaries of the world and partake of thine happiness. Thy streets bustled as thy birthday came, and the spirit could be felt as it transcended. The young men hustled. They devotees shared in awe and wonder. Thy former children, young and old, conversed, welcoming this happy reunion. Thy students grinned aloud. Others passed to and fro as if going nowhere and in distance thy drums could be heard, depicting the pains of glee, felt by many in days gone by. Hark, as I stopped to listen, the spirit was real. a and thy life has started from a man of old, for in thy cafeteria grounds laid neatly in a tomb, thy frigid bones of majestic self-sufficiency and wonderful clarity, thy stunch-looking man, the man of stamina, the man of excellence, but a and did he mean for that old spirit to die? Did he mean for it to be substituted or counterfeited? There are reasons for thy presence on this hill. In the middle of thy grounds is the old spring of thy birth, the favorite meeting place of men and women of old, who after a long laborious day needed to be comforted. Here they would come smiling. They will knitted, work-worn brows and rest. On the rise behind the spring hangs the old bell, which since 1891 chimed ever so beautifully, outpouring the spirit of those happy yesteryears. Embedded in the hearts of normalites and traditional landmarks, Palmer Hall, Hurt Hall, Langston Hall, I envision the eyes glistening, the councils, the drapes, the Thomases, the Elmores, when they talked of courting at the spring, fetching water in the wee hours of the morning for breakfast at the table in Langston Hall. I feel a sense of pride along with them as their womanhood and manhood were developed with the old normal spirit. Council meant for that spirit to live on. a and are you still proud of your heritage? Do you feel the need to go forward for thy spirit never feared? Do you have the sense of togetherness for thy spirit never hated? That man of old, he meant for that old normal spirit to live on and on. Our speaker will be introduced by Ms. Vanita Clisby King. Assistant Vice President for Enrollment Management and Director of Admissions at Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. Mrs. King. President Hugeni, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty and staff, students, alumni, reunion classes, and most especially, the Golden Class of 1965. Good morning. Good morning. Mrs. Adrian Pope Kelly Washington is a dynamic, personable and witty individual who never meets a stranger, even in foreign lands. And yet, she is most proud of the fact that she is a native of the booming metropolitan city of Sylacauga, Alabama. She is the fourth of six children born to Mr. William Henry Pope, who is now 98 years old and still going, and the late Mrs. Ambrosia Swain Pope. Her father boasts of all his children having received a post-secondary education, and it is my understanding through good sources that he has a girlfriend. 
Mrs. Washington was educated in the public schools of Sylacauga and earned the Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration and the MBA from the Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. Additionally, she completed over 30 Department of Defense and Army leadership courses. Her intuitive nature and knowledge gave her the wisdom to become the Director of Assistance Management Directorate, or SAMD, at the United States Army Aviation and Missile Command, known as AMCOM. She retired with 36 years of civilian employment. She was the first black female to earn the permanent grade of GS-15 in the history of the U.S. Army Missile Command, and she was the first and the only black female to hold the position of the director of SAMD. She was also, she was also the first black female ever to serve the division chief of air missile defense systems in SAMD, where she had the responsibility of developing, executing, and maintaining the Patriot weapon system for multiple countries to include Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. She is recognized for her multitasking skills while working in high profile positions. She actually spent 20 of her 36 years of government service in leadership positions. She managed weapon systems programs for over 70 foreign nations and organizations that valued in excess of $25.2 billion. During peak times, she managed over 1,000 government and contractor personnel, both within and outside of the United States. The host nations that Mrs. Adrian P.K. Washington visited multiple times included Denmark, Egypt, France, Germany, Great Britain, Israel, Japan, Korea, Kuwait, the Netherlands, Norway, Saudi Arabia, Switzerland, Taiwan, the United Arab Emirates, Aruba, Italy, and China. She was, she was, she was one of the first women ever allowed inside the walls of the Royal Air Defense School in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> PK, as she is fondly called by her friends, has been an active member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated since she was initiated into Gamma Mu Chapter here in 1970 at the Alabama A&M University. She has also served the sorority as the Southeastern Regional Director in 2010 and 2004, through 2014. Under Alpha Kappa Alpha's endowment fund, she capitalized three scholarships during her tenure the Harriet J. Terry Scholarship, the Adrian Pope Kelly Washington Scholarship, and the Alabama Sorority Tax Scholarship. Combined, these scholarships totaled in excess of $60,000. In May of 2014, under her leadership, as the Southeastern Regional Director of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, the region made a single cash donation of $105,000 to the Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. <laughs> Mrs. Pope Kelly is the founding board member of both the North Alabama Sickle Cell Foundation and the Ivy Center Foundation here in Huntsville, Alabama. She has been a loyal and faithful member of South of St. John AME Church for 40 years the church that was founded by our founder, Dr. William Hooper Council. She's a member of the Alabama a and University Alumni Association and the National Society of Security Pro Professionals and many other professional organizations. She is married to Mr. Darren O. Washington, retired Lieutenant Colonel, and the stepmother of one son, Daniel, who resides in Los Angeles, California, but who is here today in support of her. She and her husband make their home here in Huntsville, Alabama. She is often referred to us, to, often referred as, by us, a bad girl. My fellow normalites, please join me in welcoming to the podium our 140th Founders Day speaker, 
Mrs. Adrian P.K. Washington. If you can't be a pine at the top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley, but be. Be the best little scrub by the side of the rear. If you can't be a bush, be a tree. If you can't be a bush, be a blade of grass by some highway happier make. If you can't be the kingfish, then be a bass, but be the liveliest bass in the lake. We can't all be captains, we've got to be crew. There's something for all of us here. There's big work to do, there's lesser too, but your test must remain clear. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. It isn't the size that you win or you fail. Just be the best, the best of whatever you are. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Y'all wake out there? To uh, the board of trust, to the president of the board of trustees, in his absence, I'm just sure they forgot to put it on the governor's calendar to tell him I was speaking. To President Pro Temp of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Andre Taylor, to the Board of Trustees, to President Dr. Andrew Hugini, to the First Lady Abigail, to the students of the greatest university and the galaxy and beyond. If not for you, none of us would be here. To the faculty, the staff, elected officials, to the Huntsville community at large, family, friends, to my church members of St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church on the corner of Church and Monroe Street, just steps from the original site of this institution and also founded by William Hooper Council. <laughs> to my sisters of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, often imitated but never duplicated. To my Aunt B. Countess, she's out there somewhere. To my husband, Darwell, Darwin Odell Washington, and I must borrow a phrase from a friend, the man that God made especially for me. To my stepson, Daniel, just so glad you came. Wave, Daniel, everybody's looking for you. And to this class, the golden class of 1965, I'm going to tell you what they've already said. Y'all look good. Y'all look good. And to all others, that protocol dictate that I should call, did not call all y'all. That includes you too, Agnes Holly Smith. Greetings and salutations. Thank you so much, Mrs. King, for that wonderful introduction. We'll talk later. I offer you this, an old man going a long highway came at evening cold and gray to a chasm vast and deep and wide through which was flowing a swollen tide. The old man crossed in twilight dim, the rapid hath no fear for him, but he turned when safe on the other side to build a bridge to span the tide. Old man cried a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting time building here. Your journey will end at the end of the day. You'll never pass again this way. You cross the chasm deep and wide. Huh, why build you this bridge at evening tide? The old builder lifted his old gray head. Good friend, in the path I've come, he said, there follows after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. This stream which has been naught for me, to a fair-haired child a pitfall be. He too must cross at twilight dim. Good friend, I'm building this bridge for him. So let us remember and salute these bridge builders for, one, for the past 140 years. And in the words of Langston Hughes, for life for them, I ain't been no crystal staff. So today in celebrating 140 years of success, I am just one. I am just one of the many brave and loyal sons and daughters, 
since from the shrine on Normal's Hill, ancient his mandate to fulfill. I will share with you clips of my journey in hopes that you can see, if I can make it, you can make it. To quote the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss, Jr. of Cleveland, Ohio, in your time, in your space, with God's grace, you must make a difference that will impact the living, the dead, and yet the unborn. So the question that I will be posing to you, how will you make a difference, like the bridge builders, and how will you impact the living, the dead, and yet the unborn? What's that? Somebody asked that, there. okay, Missy, tell us how you made a difference. Glad you asked. I'm nothing special. As you heard, I grew up in the red clay soil of Alabama. Very proud to be a native of Sylacauga, Alabama. We got a super Walmart. <laughs> in the 2010 census, the population was 12,749. My four siblings and I attended public school High school, I played in the band for one year, but Mr. Larkins, who was the band director at that time, told, told me not to come back. <laughs> he said I didn't have the correct skills to play the clarinet, so I just played. Where the clarinet plays? I didn't have it, y'all. I didn't make it. So I became a cheerleader, and hence I destroyed my voice, and you hear this gravelly voice that I have today. I did not graduate number one in my class. That honor went to Winona Jacobs. College was never a question in Ambrosia's and Williams' house because after graduating high school, you were going somewhere or you were going to Avondale Cotton Mill. Y'all, I did not want to go to Avondale Cotton Mill. I did not want to go to Avondale Cotton Mill. My oldest brother, William Alfred, was a freshman at Alabama State, and my middle sister, Gwendolyn, was a junior at Alabama A&M University. My favorite uncle, Leon Pope, who's now deceased, was a vocational agricultural graduate of Alabama A&M, and he was pushing hard for me to come to Alabama A&M. He and my Aunt B. Countess were educators, and they lived in the city of Decatur. Now, let my Aunt B. Countess. She is, shall be, and continues to be the best cook in the whole wide world. So being close to Decatur was a plus. <laughs> but the item that tilted the scale for me was a scholarship to Alabama A&M for the whopping amount of $325 a semester. That was big money back then, y'all. That was big money. So you wonder how in the world that this little chubby cheek girl running across the bare, running bare feet across Pine Hill community with the neighborhood posse ever reached the foggy streets of London, England, headed for the battlefields of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, not once, not twice, but several times. Received the Combat Service Medal for Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm. Became one of the first women to set foot in the air defense training base in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Walked in missile sites in Germany, Netherlands, and Japan experienced sand burning through my shoes in the United Arab Emirates because I was stupid enough to go out in the noonday sun. And in Singapore, experienced the wonders of designer stores. I had no money, but I went through the stores. <laughs> my work carried me around the world back again and again and again. I traveled on the grace of God and on the wings of prayer. What carried me through? What gave me the base for this wonderful job? The bridge that spanned the tide. The chasm deep and wide for me was Alabama A&M University in Normal, Alabama. <laughs> Young people, listen. I got my job through the placement office at Alabama A&M University. Start going when you a sophomore. So by the time you hit that senior rim, you got that interview process easy. But I got my job through the placement office here at Alabama A&M University. But if we all would take a moment to reflect, where would you be if you not come to Normal Hill for its rich heritage? 
Alabama A&M equips us with technical and professional skills, knowledge to succeed in corporate America, the aspiration to become entrepreneurs, the ability to contribute back to our society. And it lets us set goals that are with no limits. The bridge builders will mean to cross into a global society because that's what tr we are truly now. It was Alabama A&M University. And young people, it is true. It is true. You can start here and go anywhere. I believed it. I did it. And you can too. In 1990, I led a charge to develop the largest U.S. Army effort to transfer goods and services to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, a program valued in excess of $4 billion for the deployment of the phased array tracking radar on intercept to target, better known as Patriot Air Defense System. The acquisition and the development of this system served as a deterrent to Iraq to not to invade the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in my time in my space, with God's grace, this deployment made a difference that impacted the living, the dead, and yet the unborn. After approval by the President of the United States and the U.S. Congress, the task was handed down through government channels to put pen to paper. The outline to start this deployment started in a small office on the second floor in the Patriot Project office where a Alabama A&M University flag was prominently, prominently displayed. Now, I knew nothing about phased array tracking radars to intercept on target because I was a business major and an economics minor. But Eleanor Roosevelt once said, a woman is like a tea bag. You never know how strong she is until you get her in hot water. But at Alabama A&M University, I was taught to think. I was taught to listen. And I was taught, read it for yourself. But it was a wonderful experience. But I would like to share with you the short version of one of my first lessons on guided missile systems. The missile knows where it is at all times. If it knows where it is, because it knows where it isn't. By subtracting where it is from where it isn't, or where it isn't from where it is, whichever is greater, it obtains a deviation or a difference. The guided missile subsystem uses the deviation to generate correct commands to drive the missiles from a point from where it isn't to a position to where it isn't. Arriving at the position where it isn't, it now is. In the event that the position that it is now is is not the position that it wasn't, the system acquires a variation, the variation being the difference between where the missile is and where it isn't. You got that, Jeanette? There will be a test. Now, since we know just a little bit about phased array tracking radar on intercept target, we can move on. A&M encouraged us to continue lifelong learning so that we can always meet the challenges that will impact the living, the dead, and yet the unborn. Let me share another story with you quickly. Some years ago, I was a, really some years ago, I was a branch chief. And I was told by a young black man who attended the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa that he went there because everyone knew that you could not get a good education at historical black college and university. Now, those who know me know that upset me to beyond end. For people of my generation, people of my generation fought, bled, died, had dogs set up on them, battled with deadly streams of water from fire hoses, sped up on, called every name that you've ever heard, just to earn him the right to matriculate at the University of Alabama. It disturbed me greatly, for if there hadn't been no Alabama A&M College or a HBCU, he with his little rusty heels and pencil tail britches would never walk the plains of the University of Alabama. It is because HBCUs that he was, he was there. So I posed this question to the young man. Our redheaded coworker, Melissa, where does she go to? What university does she go to? And he said, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. I said, that's nice. And 
What about Maria, University of Florida? I said, that's nice. I said, now tell me how many of the folks in the branch have graduated from these renowned majority institutions? He said, about five. I said, five? He said, yeah, I said, five out of 16. He said, that's correct. And I remarked, and I said, hmm, now that's strange. And all you folks work for an individual who attended Alabama A&M University and HBCU. So the message to him was, don't forget the bridge that brought you over, nor the individual who crossed that bridge, who now stands in your pathway between failure and success. Now, many will say after 140 years, we no longer lead HBCUs. We have arrived. We got the Mercy D's. We got the big houses. Our children go to Harvard, Princeton, and all those good universities. So, we don't need an HBCU anymore. We have arrived. I just want you to say to those people, tell them quickly, stop drinking that Kool-Aid. Stop drinking that Kool-Aid. It is not so. Executive Order 1352, February 26, 2010, issued by the White House on their initiative on HBCUs for promoting excellence, innovation, and sustainability of HBCUs. The initiative is housed, of course, in the Department of Education to strengthen HBCUs. When we speak of education, it's just like a dress. One size won't fit all. You see, the difference between an Alabama A&M University and a majority institution is not the science book, it's not the history book, but the willingness of, and dedication of faculty and staff to ensure that you are exposed to oceans of knowledge in a nurturing environment. It is up to you to sink or swim, because once you get out there in the words of Langston Hughes, life for you ain't going to be no crystal stair. You have to stand up and put out. Nobody's going to push you ahead because of the color of your skin. Here at Alabama A&M University, take, take the knowledge that they offer you. Challenge the faculty and staff. Ask questions because once you get out there, life for you, again, will not be a crystal stair. We need HBCUs. We need HBCUs. We need HBCUs. And we need your help. We need your help to keep the doors open for another 140 years. So how do you become a bridge builder? Or better yet, support the bridge that has been standing for 140 years? What have you done or will do for the bridge that brought you over. Now, some say, look, lady, I'm just trying to graduate. I'm just trying to get out. I don't have any money. I got to pay my student loans. I'm only 22. What can I do? What can I do? Well, at the age of 22, William Hooper Council opened Lincoln School here in Huntsville. While working as a teacher, he moonlighted as a porter in hotels and worked in restaurants to earn additional money. He didn't stop there. He attended night school where he studied chemistry, mathematics, law, and Latin. Now, he was admitted to the Alabama Bar. We're talking the 1800s, and he was admitted into the Alabama Bar. So I submit to you, my loyal sons and daughters from Normal Hill, you can start here and go anywhere because of the bridge builder of William Hooper Council. So, in your time, in your space, in God's grace, you must make a difference that will impact the living, the dead, and yet, the unborn. What can you do at 22 years old? Simple. Give up two soda pops a week for the bridge you cross over. Now, 20 ounce of pop costs you $1.72 with tax as your local mini mark. $1.72. Now, for a go two sodas a week, that's $3.44. That equals to $178 per year. Put your money in a piggy bank daily so it won't be laying around so you can get to it and spend it. At the end of two months, yeah, it's not much in there two months, but after the end of two months, go get a check and take it down to the foundation. 
start the process all over again the next month. Now, let's say there are six of you, 600 of you, out of student body of over 5,000. If just 600 of you would forego the cost of two sodas per week, that would met the university $106,800 per year. Now let's expand that to 100 graduates. That number is now $17,800,000 $800, for just two soda pops a week. Now, if we use that cost of a six pack of beer in this equation, <laughs> the return will be much higher and the weight loss will be tripled. Now let's move on to another level of seasoned graduates from Alabama a and University. They have two children, one daughter who's getting ready to go to school and she won't play at JKA. They're a family of four with a mortgage with only an income of $85,000. They must be educators, Doc. They're strapped. They have no financial support right now to give to their beloved institution. Give of your time and your talent to fundraising efforts. Volunteer to answer the phone through in ja for Jathathon. It's going on now, folks. They're still taking donations for Jathathon. Contact your classmates for donations for upcoming Founders Week. Doesn't have to be your year. Just contact them to ask them to give. Some are just waiting for, say, give me. Well, some say, well, you know I'm not giving anything. They treated me so badly when I was up there that I'm not going to give them anything. Y'all heard them. Then tell them that I ask you to quote to them Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, and it reads, Brothering, I count not myself to have apprehended, but it is one thing I, I think I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto those things are, that are before me. If you received a degree or not, the knowledge that you were exposed to cannot be erased. And where you obtain that knowledge will not change, regardless of your experience, good, bad, or indifferent. You owe the bridge that gave you the opportunity to base to earn a living. Whatever upsets you, pass it on to them, because I know they're not here today. Whatever upset them, tell them to go to the child's film Frozen and let it go, let it go. In my time, in my space, with God's grace, I make a difference by impacting the living, the dead, and the yet unborn through scholarships to this institution. Under the leadership of Dorothy Buchanan Wilson, international president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, we are now targeting and focusing on Think HBCUs, Think HBCUs. Our members are strongly encouraged to give to HBCUs, even if you did not graduate from an HBCU. Undergraduates, you looking for money for school? All right, then get those cell phones out. I'm going to give you something. I'll give you a minute. Da, 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 Yeah, y'all fast. I don't have to wait that long. Google Alpha Kappa Alpha Educational Advancement Foundation Scholarships. Alpha Kappa Alpha Educational Advancement Scholarships. Now I'm going to give this information to Mrs. King for those of you who may be technology challenged like me, but click on undergraduate. Then click on fellowships and endowments. Under that, you will scroll down to Southeastern Region, and the first name you will see is Adrian Pope Kelly Washington. Now, a lot of people have asked me, why do you have so many names? I will tell you, a check comes with each one of those names. <laughs> so I easily say, Adrian Pope Kelly Washington. <laughs> Going down to the state of Alabama, is scholarship Alabama Statewide HBCU Scholarship Fund. And look just a little bit further, you will see Harriet Josephine Terry. Harriet, Josephine, Terry, you know, like the dorm up here. The qualification for all these scholarships is only a 2.5. Any 
major, 2.5 any major. The Harriet Josephine Terry Scholarship is only for students at Alabama A&M University. Imagine my disappointment last year when we had no applications. Imagine my disappointment last year that we had no applications for the Harriet Josephine Terry Scholarship. Applications are evaluated by me. Yeah, I'm going to get a lot of calls. Y'all will be real nice to me now, aren't you? <laughs> Southeastern region of Alpha Kappa Alpha in Southeastern region space and with God's grace, we have made a difference that will impact the living, the dead, and yet the unborn. How? Glad you ask. The living. We established a $100,000 scholarship last year to support students currently at Alabama A&M. The other scholarships I have just read to you. The dead. Scholarships named after Harriet Josephine Terry. Why? She was an English professor here at Alabama A&M for over 30 years, and she was one of the founders of Alpha Kappa Alpha. And yet the unborn, those who will be funded by this scholarship in, ye this scholarship in years to come. As Julian Brockton Parnell, the 16th president of Alpha Kappa Alpha once said, those who toot not their own horns deserves not to be tooted. So I'm tooting our horn of Alpha Kappa Alpha. Men of brave and loyal sons sent from the shrine on Norma's Hill. Filled with the zeal of tasks well done, ancients' mandate to fulfill. Alma Mata, blessed be thy name. Long, long live thy fame. My charge to you is don't forget the bridge that brought you over. So how will you make a difference? What will be your legacy? What will really matter at the end? As I close, I want to share with you a poem by Michael Josephson, Josephson, reminding us all about our lives. Those of you who know me, you've heard this poem before, and yes, you're going to hear it again. What will matter? Ready or not, someday it will all come to an end. There will be no sunrises, no minutes, no hours, no days. All things you collected, whether treasured or forgotten, will pass to someone else. Your wealth, your fame, your temporal power will shrivel to irrelevancy. It will not matter what you own or who you owed. Your grudges, resentments, ambitions, frustrations, and jealousies will finally disappear. Too, so too will your hopes, your dreams, and your to-do list will expire. The wins and losses that once seems so important will fade away. It won't matter where you came from or what side of the tracks that you lived on at the end. It won't matter whether you were beautiful or brilliant. Even your gender and your skin color will be irrelevant. So what will matter? So what will matter? How will the value of your days be measured? What will matter is not what you bought, but what you built. Not what you got, but what you gave. What will matter is not your success, but your significance. What will matter is not what you learned, but what you taught. What will matter is every act of integrity, compassion, courage, or sacrifice that enriched, empowered, or encouraged others to emulate your example. What will matter is not your competency, but your character. What will matter is not your competency, but your character. What will matter is not how many people knew you, but how many will feel the lasting loss when you're gone. What will matter is not your memories, but the memories that will live on in those you loved. Listen, what will matter is not how long you will be remembered, but, for, but by whom and for what? Life, life, living a life that matters does not happen by accident. It does not matter, does not happen by circumstances, but of choice. 
choose to live a life that matters, a life that must make a difference, that will impact the living, the dead, and yet the unborn. I thank you for your time. But before I release this podium to you, Dr. Hugh Guinea, we have a short presentation that we would like to make. Will Ms. Jacqueline Dennis, Ms. Cheryl Johnson, and a member of the Whit family make your way to the stage? Ms. Jacqueline Dennis, Ms. Cheryl Johnson, and a member of the Whit family, will you please make your way to the stage? Ms. Cheryl Lynn Whit was a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Roca Omega Chapter, and served as our transportation chairman for our 82nd Southeastern Regional Conference held here in Huntsville, Alabama, the 13th through the 16th, 2014. This was our second time that she chaired this committee. Our regional conferences covered the states of Alabama, Tennessee, and Mississippi. Tragically, five months later, she was killed in a car accident on I-565 on her way to work. Cheryl Lynn Whit received a BS degree from Alabama A&M in office administration and was employed by the university as a data control specialist in the office of the comptroller. My last conversation took place with her on my driveway. We were exchanging material after the conference. She wanted to know if I was surprised by the spectacular efforts she made for our very special guests to come to the regional director's dinner. It was complete with a police escort, white limousines, and a drivers dressed in tux, complete with pink bow ties and cummerbunds. I said, yes, sir, Cheryl. I was very surprised. And she grinned. She had an infectious grin and dedicated it and purposeful sense of duty to do anything she worked on. She shared herself from the, 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 the spotlight, but everyone knew you could depend on Cheryl. Dr. Hugh Guinea, will you join me? Will Cheryl Witt's family please stand where you are? The family please stand. Will all members of Alpha Kappa Alpha please rise to your feet at this time? Dr. Hugini, on behalf of the Whit families and members of the Southeastern region of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority, we would like to start a scholarship fund in the honor of Cheryl Whit. And we are going to open that scholarship. $13,500. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm kind of embarrassed. There's an error on the check. It's $15,000. I'm and I'm still collecting money. So we have, at this point, we have $15,000 that we will present to you today. Who wants the real money? Thank you so much. Ms. Washington, we certainly want to thank you for that inspirational message this morning. Thank you for the challenge that you have given to all of us to be bridge builders. Thank you for reminding us again of the value of a degree from Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University, that you indeed can start here and you can go anywhere. And you are a living example of that, along with many, many other loyal sons and daughters of this great university. And we also want to thank you for your generosity. Thank you for loving Alabama a and University enough to invest in her. Thank you so very much. Would you please join me here at the podium? We'd like to present this 
pledge stone plaque to you in commemoration of your being our speaker on the 140th anniversary of Alabama Agricultural Mechanical University. At this time, the president of the Alabama a University National Alumni Association, Mr. Tim McAnally, will introduce our alumna of the year. Mr. McAnally. Thank you. Good morning. I take great pride in serving as your National Alumni President. I humbly serve into the class of 65. We appreciate you pioneering what you did and what you went through 50 years ago, along with the 90 years worth of classes that were before you, and as we hope, the 90 years that will come behind you and the 90 after that, we appreciate you for your pioneering. I want to echo what Miss Multi-Name, Multi-Check, <laughs> proud alumna said. She stopped by the placement office in the 70s, and she got a job, and it worked. I stopped by in the 80s, and I got a job, and it worked. Some of them stopped by in the 60s, and they got a job, and it worked. Ladies and gentlemen, it works at Alabama A&M University. It works at this HBCU. And one thing that multi-check, multi-name said, you should read it, and you should understand it. Let me understand. When you hear HBCU, a lot of you just hear the initials. Well, let me tell you what I hear. I hear historically blessed college and university. Because if you are a historically black college university today and your doors are still open, you can't tell me you have not been blessed with a big B and a big D. That means it starts with a B and it ends with a D. And I work with people from Notre Dame and Vanderbilt and when they don't get what I said, I take that last word and I tell them what the first letter was and the last letter and they soon leave my office because I'm proud to be an Alabama A&M University graduate from an HBCU. That's a helping black college and university. Our mission is to help change people's lives that come through these doors. HBCU is a historically black college university and maybe, you may not know, but when you read the list, Alabama A&M University is the first HBCU in the list, and some of you may think because it's alphabetical order, but they could have named it a lot of things, but they made sure it started with an A, so it would always be at the top of the list. <laughs> and with that said, on this occasion, I proudly present from our HBCU, our alumni of the year for 2015, Anitra Withers, her bio is printed, but let me translate it for you. Anita Withers is from the class of 1996. See, that's four years before 2000 and one year after 1995, if you're a numbers person. But to be the alumni of the year, there were over 40,000 people that have walked through these doors. There's been a few alumni of the year, but this year we salute Anita. She came to Alabama A&M, she graduated from Alabama A&M, and ever since she left Alabama A&M, she's been working for Alabama A&M. So as an alumni of the year, I want to proudly recognize Anitra Withers for doing a little bit more, going a little bit further, and answering the call of being a proud alum of this Alabama A&M University here on Normals Hill on this day in 2015. Accepting the award for Anitra will be one of her chapter mates because from what I said, Anitra is getting into the night. You know, flights change, we can't control that. But we have uh, Karen Renee Epps, who is also a graduate of Alabama A&M University, to accept that award on Anitra's behalf. Good morning. Protocol having already been established for members of the Washington, D.C. chapter who are in the audience, would you stand with me? to accept this award on behalf of our Vice President, Ms. Anitra Withers. Anitra could not be here today, but I am honored to accept this award on behalf of Anitra, who currently serves as the President of the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Chapter. She also 
serve as the vice president and has been very active in the chapter. As the regional vice president for Region 6 and as the vice president of the chapter, I am honored to accept this. One thing I would like to share with the students to add to the list that Ms. Pope Kelly shared, the National Alumni Association awards scholarships every year. Tomorrow morning, we will be honored to award $30,000 to 11 deserving students. Students like Ms. Kelly were disappointed that we only received this year 20 applications. So I encourage you to apply. The application deadline is March 1st of each year. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. We are pleased this year to add to this list of members in the Normal Legacy Society for the class of 2015, Reverend Dr. Belvey and Mrs. Dorothy B. Bryce. Dr. and Mrs. Bryce, would you please come forward so that we may induct you into the Normal Legacy Society. Let's give a round of applause to Dr. and Mrs. Bryce. They have received a specially designed pin denoting their membership in the Normal Legacy Society as well as a plaque. Please understand that the opportunity to join the Normal Legacy Society is still open. It is open for membership and we certainly do encourage you to become members of the Normal Legacy Society.